Last week we crossed the Mona Passage, did some amazing hiking, and had fun with friends. This week things are a little bumpier as we have problems with both engines and are without our mainsail, all while working our way into the trade winds. But that doesn't mean it's all bad. So come along as we make our way around Puerto Rico. Hey Cap, how's it going? It's been a long day. Had her sail up for a while. Or the one sail we have right now. Have our engine going, the one engine we've got right now. The hard part in getting a mainsail down is undoing all the connections to the mast and reef lines. Cruising buddies make this way, way easier. As long as we were on our way to a sailmaker, we decided to get our asymmetrical spinnaker looked at. We haven't used it yet, but I have a lot of downwind miles ahead of us, so it's a type of sail we hope to make good use of. We need to get the clue fixed, unless the sail fails inspection and we need a whole new one. Fix the clues and put, you know, new put pocket. some patch over the yeah. Uh, pocket. Yeah. Can be. Yeah. Sure. You know, of course we can fix. You, you think that's reasonable? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. After deciding to repair the mainsail, we look at the spinnaker. I don't love the sock deployment method. It can be hard to get up and down. And with how big downwind sails are, you really have to watch weather and make sure you don't get caught with them up in a storm. I would like to get something on a furler, which would be easier to get up and down. Really hard to get down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
So I I always prefer the software, you know? The software is good in in every condition. Yeah. Well I'll get it out. I mean is this you look okay, it looks okay to my yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay to me, you yeah. know? Yeah. The, the nylon is so durable, you know? Um, uh, especially if you keep the sail. Well, he sure didn't like my idea of putting my existing asymmetrical sail on a furler. I'm going to keep exploring options. I really want a downwind sail I can easily deploy and furl. It will take a week or two to repair the main, so we're going to motor sail with the jib as we wind our way around the coast. But on the way we lose yet another method of propulsion. A sudden large rattling in the port engine room caused me to shut the engine down and go investigate. Water back there, um, seawater. This guy is cracked. And then a nut. This has worked its way out. I'm worried I got a bent shaft. Engine's still running, but it's rattling. I you just heard it, that was the build just slurping up the water. I hope this isn't something major, but it could be. The engine block has fallen by, I don't know, two millimeters, three millimeters. So it's enough to where only half of this is exposed. I can't get it back in. It's shifted, shifted down a little bit. Uh, and then I think that movement may have gotten the shaft out of alignment. I uh, cracked that seal. Uh, moved the shaft. All right, the next day. It digested a little bit. So this came out, this settled down, causing everything to go down a little bit. I've got a Spanish, Spanish windlass set up here. Wrapped multiple times around the engine, up to my two biggest winches up there. Uh, and I'm going to twist, 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 and hope I only need to raise this like two millimeters, three millimeters. Well, hold on now. Uh, hold on. This is too low. Hmm. So actually the engine block is above this. So I've got it all wrong. It took a good amount of noodling from the brain trust and ultimately some outside help. But the answer was as simple as if the front right of the engine went up, that means the back left went down. And how did the back left go down? Because the bracket holding it into place broke. It would be a couple of weeks before we could get someone to weld it back together. And until then, we were down to one engine and no mainsail. Engine issues or no, we weren't going to let it stop us from further exploring Puerto Rico, and in particular, Old San Juan, something we'd really been looking forward to. El Moro is an impressive fort whose construction started nearly half a millennium ago. That's pretty old for this side of the Atlantic, but San Juan is one of the oldest settlements and its large natural harbor was very important to the Spanish Empire. We wandered out the main entrance and set off around the outside. It turns out the fort walls are typically designed without a lot of doors, so we unwittingly signed ourselves up for a bit of a hike in the heat, but the surroundings were very impressive.
Okay, now on to the real fun. Checking into our beautiful, air-conditioned hotel. It's a balcony. It's open. Without, without a balcony. Oh my goodness, and look at the beautiful airport. Right there. Showers. Woohoo! Once we're all clean, we head off to a lovely dinner in one of the prettiest little cafes I've ever seen. Then a good night's sleep before a day of provisioning and errands. Rico, just trying to drive across the island to get the mainsail. Took a wrong turn and heading over the mountain, but it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Very different from the sea up in the clouds. There we are, all done. Back on the boat. Now to put the provisions away and the mainsail back up. This is 5x the speed we showed you when we took it down. That's the difference a couple capable boat friends make. But with time and determination, I successfully got it rigged. Let's hope it's good to go to New Zealand. Goodbye, mainland Puerto Rico. Virgin Islands, here we come. Woo! Fajardo to Calibra is a short hop, but it's one that would briefly see us go from one working engine down to zero. Coming into Culebra, uh, the starboard engine overheated, um, which is what I'm running for propulsion when I need it because the port engine is just a touch out of alignment. Alternator belt broke, uh, which runs, circulates the coolant uh, in the engine, so the engine overheated. So, I'm going to change the belt, I'm going to put coolant back in it. Fortunately, after replacing the alternator belt and topping up the coolant, the engine was back in business. Which is good, because sailing onto a mooring ball would have been beyond my abilities. I know the footage in the engine room wasn't the prettiest, but that's part of cruising life. Dark, dusk, uh, shark infested water. So is diving on a mooring ball or anchor when you'd really rather not. But then so are amazing beach walks with the people closest to you. Turns out that our paddleboard cannot support all four of us. Yes, it can. 